oh, let's let's talk about Kanye. So Kanye's had another breakdown. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's you guys, right? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I don't really um, know what I'm talking about and I'm being insensitive. But I found it very difficult to care about this sort of outbreaks that he's been having and mental breakthroughs or whatever they may be. And this is coming from an avid Kanye West fan, right? I was, I, I've always been a big fan of his artistry, I think, more so, more so. I think he represents, he is a truest form of an artist on that level, right? He gets to do exactly what he wants. He beats to his own drum. Um, he is the consummate perfectionist. Um, he pushes boundaries. Every single one of his albums, you know, even from through the wire upwards, you could say every, none, none of them sound the same, right? They all come completely different. Um, he kind of, you know, really blew the lid in terms of how he, you know, was able to produce and put music together in, in a collective, wasn't afraid of using writers and various producers and flying people out to, you know, recording sessions in the middle of Hawaii, just a really eclectic and amazing dude. And don't even get me started on the fashion tip, right? So I'm, I'm a big Kanye West fan. I love the guy, but these breakdowns and breakthroughs he's been having in public lately have been really disturbing on one hand but also really kind of exhausting as a fan to kind of try and you know reconcile in your head right that the guy that you sort of loved and championed and or was championing you and you thought you saw your, a lot of yourself in that person reflected again you don't know the guy but you a lot of the values that you have about creativity and design and music and career and family value whatever it may be right it's reflected in the sky and then suddenly I guess you get older they get older they grow up and they get into other things their economical their economical earning power changes they get everything they complained about in life it suddenly comes to them right it suddenly that person changes and i guess you could maybe relate it similar to what people go through with their favorite youtubers right when you're following a little vlogger like an emma chamberlain went through this right where people were following her and she was like this weird quirky girl that had a you know a wicked sense of humor that people tend to like and then she you know she gets successful she becomes a big star on youtube and then suddenly you know that kind of girl next door personality that she had doesn't necessarily look as authentic because she's now wearing a Gucci shirt she's now got a background with an amazing you know um what do you call it uh an invisible staircase leading up to a massive bedroom right she's got a g-wagon she wears a rolex i don't know it kind of it immediately sort of like fucks with your head but you just have to accept that you know if that's the person that you fell in love with as a fan of that person you're gonna have to accept that they grow up and they evolve into a different person so the same thing happens to kanye but i think a lot of the fans of kanye don't really haven't come to grips with the fact that this just might be him you know people are saying oh he's got a problem there's something going on with him maybe not maybe he's just completely fine and this is just adult kanye this is kanye 40 years plus with four kids and a wife this is it like this is what you get like he's just in this sort of mode so he co obviously this is off the back of his rally um presidential rally that he put together which i think he was able to secure the, the signatures to be on the ballot right that was a bit of a shit show mostly in terms of its um production I think him not having a microphone was weird, especially if you're asking people questions and asking them to comment. And, you know, small enclosed rooms with no microphone, it's just a bad look. So that wasn't a good thing. And, you know, of course, the breaking down, you know, about you know, the abortions and all this sort of stuff was just way too much, in it? TMI for sure. And I think that's what happens a lot. If you actually care about the celebrity, I think I've realised that, or the public figure, you tend to get a bit... Because I'm not a fan of that whole put your drama online anyway i think it's really um it's really unbecoming it's not really a trait that i enjoy from men they have to gossip and talk about um their personal lives on the internet it's just not something i'm into but it it kind of cringes you out doubly when you actually admire the person it's like ugh. it's kind of like your friend doing something really embarrassing in public you have to be like oh, okay just let and then you know you just talk to him after about it but in this case you just gotta just cringe and hold it in so i guess after this rally um everyone it doesn't it doesn't go well and then as like clockwork as it keeps happening whenever he has an outbreak online whenever it's outbreak online or in public the the family goes to their pr or their publicist which happens to be a tmz and they feed him a story now i got no no way you can prove if the connections are actually feeding TMZ story, but it just seems a bit odd that every time he has a breakdown, there's a story to counteract that breakdown. Like, oh, Kanye is going through it. Oh, Kanye is mentally. It's just like yuck, man. I know the family don't necessarily they don't necessarily mesh with his ideals, right? I guess Kanye in the connections, but let's reach a bit of an impasse. Let's let's meet in the middle. 
if I go through something in public, don't talk about it. Don't feed TMZ news about my recovery or let them know that you've tried everything. It's just a bit yucky. So that's been a bit odd to see. But I guess off the back of that, Kanye went on another rant. This is the most recent one from what, yesterday or today. And it says, um, the first screenshot, I think this should be in order. It says, um, all positivity when the devil attacks, even if I never see my kids till they're 18. Because you believe white people on God, North will never be exploited by a system of white supremacy, which is, you know, in any other time, if this wasn't kind of sort of like um, buffeted with like, you know, the public breakdowns of cryings and then, you know, 400 years was a choice. This wouldn't be a problem in isolation it's not really a problem in him saying what he's saying but because of everything else we know in context it's like Ish. next tweet says white supremacy at this at this highest um no cap okay we don't know what the picture says of the keyboard it continues that mj i'm assuming michael jackson told you about tommy before they killed him him saved my daughter's life in the name of jesus is god's choice only what I don't know what that means. It says, I will live for my children. It says, Chris, I'm in Cody if you're not planning another one of your child children's Playboy shoots, which is a really, really mad kind of um, dig to put out there. It obviously goes to show that there is some friction in a family concerning um, the Kardashians' prevalence to undress themselves in front of a camera, which always kind of seemed weird. Again, I don't think it's it's unbecoming to try and psychoanalyze people's relationships or to you know, you know offer any kind of opinion because love is love you you know whoever it happens to be enjoy yourself and knock yourselves out you know uh spread and multiply but it did seem weird at the time when they got together right kim kardashian and kanye just because of how private kanye seems to be with his private life right with his relationships he's not very you know out there apart from amber rose um, he was, you know, you don't really know about the people he hooked up with and stuff. He seems to keep that close to his chest. And, you know, the idea of him being okay with being in a reality TV family, you know, the, you know, they essentially North American royalty just seemed weird, didn't it? They didn't really marry. Um, and this is not being a judgment too, because I think a lot of people judge the Kardashians too much, especially that bloody annoying Jamila Jamil woman, right? Jeremy, she's always banging on about the Kardashians. are a to the to femininity. It's like, shut up. No, they're not right if airhead girls want to follow the kardashians and want to wear makeup and get birkin bags let them who cares right if you want to be an intellectual and talk about feminism and protest do that too but don't begrudge the girls i just want a, a bit of you know a bit of mental because there's, there's, there's a lot of smart girls or quote-unquote intelligent girls that watch the kardashians because they like to just turn off their brain and just you know uh transport themselves into this kind of mythical world it's ultra rich um attractive people from armenia like it's not a bad thing it's just weird so i just thought it was strange anyway in general the, the marrying so maybe this is a reflection of like hey he has an issue with playboy i think because kim recently did a really tasteful video shoot photo shoot with them recently um and it's always been a bit of an issue i guess in that regard so he's putting out that business and he's trying to paint chris as the pimp of the family which people have asserted for a while another one come and come and get me we have another one about him talking about larsa i'm not sure if that's larsa pippin um scotty pippin's ex-wife who I remember, I remember seeing an art yeah i think he probably is because i remember I, I do remember seeing an article that featured uh where can i find it there was an article about let me see if i can see it larsa pippin um and her daughter doing of some sort of bikini shoot yeah there we go i've got it here some people they did some sort of like twin bikini suit thing which i'm not sure if this is a thing <sighs> I guess most mums, most Hollywood Hill mums will be more comfortable to do this as opposed to the dads. The dads wouldn't be comfortable, right? Especially if it's like a, you know, an old money guy. He wouldn't be comfortable all of his daughter who, you know, is not of age or is underage or whatever, he, or is really young, right? He wouldn't be happy with his really young um, daughter doing a scantily clad photo shoot right next to their poor because the suggestion is that you know oh my god your mom looks like your sister and then you know people are oogling at your daughter and stuff online it's just a bit gross isn't it so i'm assuming kanye is kind of alluding to that that he would never allow north to kind of be looking like this and this is a picture from people magazine it says life last a Lassa Pippin is twinning with daughter Sophia in matching butterfly print bikinis. Uh, again, it's just a whatever picture. I get Lassa Pippin on the left. The woman that caused so much trouble between Pippin and uh, Future is there in a bikini and so is her daughter. 
And it's a bit like, how old is the daughter? 40, 12 years old. Okay, that's weird, isn't it? So I can imagine why Kanye is doing this post. She's massive for 12, isn't it? This is definitely a basketball player. She's like the same height as her mum. But God, that's a bit much, isn't it? Right? Imagine you and your, your mum telling you to put on a bikini to go and do a photo shoot with her by the pool. And she's 12 years old. Like, what? It's just a bit weird. So I'm assuming that's what Kanye was kind of getting at, that he would never allow his daughter to do the same thing, um, which, again, I don't have any I don't have any problems with that whatsoever because I think that's a bit nasty, man, in my opinion. Uh, we carry on. We say Drake, of course, that he's current deception. He's got another one. Sorry, I missed in Jesus' name. No cap, no more cap, which is funny. You can almost say no cap at the end of a, of a prayer, right, of, of a declaration of prayer, whatever it may be. It's always interesting when people get very rarely right i don't know maybe you guys can tell me an example but very rarely have i met someone that's got into religion late in life who has turned out who hasn't got into it like like a psychopath that just decided you know hey i'm going to become uh muslim i'm going to become christian it's just my my life choice now you know i think i want to move change things up a bit i've been leading a life of sin whatever it may be i've reached a bit of an impasse with my career i've had a bit of a breakthrough i've seen life differently i'm just going to decide to do this thing live my life via this doctrine very rarely do they just do that and just shut up about it right it just kind of that's just their thing and if you if you kind of move away you move away somehow or not they tend to somehow affect your life in one way shape or form whether you get into an argument some sort of debate they have some sort of snarky thing they say online. There's always something. They rarely, very rarely just say, it's like, you know, they're very rarely just like, go and do their religion like reading a book. They would always, it's always like, and maybe it's the fact that you're when you're of age and you then become religious. Yeah, when you, when you become religious at a more mature age, maybe it's the fact that you're so excited about what's happened to your life, all the positives that have come from it, right? Your mental, spiritual self has been, you know, reawakened, right? You've had maybe some material things you can point towards and say, hey, look, look at this thing I'm doing now. I mean, I mean look at the way I lost all this sort of stuff, right? I'm not drinking, I'm not smoking, right? All these things you can point to. And you're just eager to share it with people, but you have to realize that no one cares as much as you do. It's very difficult to really realize that. It's sort of like when you go on holiday and you come back to work and everyone's like interested to hear your holiday stories some people are but some people are some people are but some people aren't and there's a real real small time frame between how long you can tell a holiday story you have to really just have the you know the five main points of what happened right maybe some flight stuff something that happened in a hotel some you hooked up with somebody whatever have your main talking points and you, you probably have a couple of days before even if somebody asks you hey how was your holiday don't tell them because they're not really asking they're just they're just trying to be polite um it's sort of the same thing i would say but hey let's continue with the tweets um he says should i name more um which is always tempting in that regard because you know what you're doing there he says we can handle this like gentlemen he quotes his own tweet and takes a picture of it which i don't know why he did that but he continues he says here he says they tried to fly in with two doctors to 5150 me which i'm assuming is that thing that happens where if you are a danger to yourself, they essentially come with a straight jacket and take you off to a, a medical a f medical facility. Is it a medical facility or is it a physician? I don't know, whatever maybe. You go to the crazy house. So that so they, so now we get into insight into maybe they are offering some assistance. And it continues, it's family anyway. I've been trying to get a divorce since Kim went met with Mick in the Waldorf for prison reform, quote unquote. Eek. So what he's suggesting that Kim is um had an affair with Meek Mill. That's random. It could be true, but that's random as hell, isn't it? We haven't heard anything about them too. But maybe this explains why he took a little unnecessary dig at Meek Mill when he was having a conversation with Sway not Sway, uh, with Big Boy. Remember when he was in the studio in his studio for Yeezy and he said something about how can you be talking about guns and all this sort of stuff, but you're trying to fight for prison reform when you just got out of prison for I don't know, or something like that, I remember. Um, bloody hell he said continues and says I've got 200 more to go what does that mean that Kim's been cheating on him with 200 people or he's got 200 more people to air out maybe maybe this is a manic episode because each line doesn't really make any sense in it when in in perpetuity or you know as one they don't really make much sense each line they could each be individual tweets but they're all kind of one thought which maybe is illustration that he's going cuckoo um, it says here I got 200 more to go. The next one says, this is my lady tweet of the night. Chris Chong on. <laughs> that is hilarious. I saw that meme earlier. Chris Chong on. That is really hilarious. He's really, it seems like he doesn't like Chris Jenner too much. Right. 
that might be because of how close she is with Drake. That might be an issue because I, I think I think Kanye is one of those kind of guys. If you're cool with my enemy, he'll be a little bit diff if miffed with you, right? Some people like that though, right? If you have an argument with somebody, but they happen to be friends with them too, they'll just keep they'll just keep being both of your guys friends, which I've always hated. I think you just have to decide who you're gonna ride with and just be it let it be or if you're going to be friends with that person that i don't like you can never mention a name in my presence again never which is very difficult right because it's going to make it awkward because you're going to have to think about everything you say <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the next one this is little baby my favorite rapper but won't do a song with me which is super funny to imagine if that's true little baby is a new rapper in the scene refuses to do a song with kanye because he's too much drama <laughs> how the tables have turned and that's what i think is indicative of just how little these because again don't get me wrong he deleted them all but this shows how little these tweets really resonate with people because i think a kanye of old the kanye of maybe 2018 maybe even a couple of years prior to that he would have broke the internet with this stuff and again don't get me wrong it is causing some maybe it's because of covid we've got real life issues happening people are not that bothered but it feels as if no one really cares that much and maybe that goes to show that you know a person like little baby doesn't necessarily have the same reverence for a kanye than the generation that came before him which maybe might be mine do you know what i mean they're a bit like this guy's a nutcase he's a, he's a headache you know what i mean allow it and it continues it says here it says meek is my man and was respectful that's my dog kim was out of kim was out of line in throwing his wife under the bus jesus i'm worth five fifth five billion dollars and more than that though christ but y'all ain't listened to MJ and now y'all believe them. I don't know what that means. Um, he says, Chris and Kim put out a statement without my approval, which I've always said, I, I think they, they are feeding TMZ news, which I don't think is good um, for heart family unity or harmony. Again, I don't know. Maybe that's the way they deal with stuff. They kind of use TMZ as their unofficial publicist, but it's just a bit weird, I think. Especially if your husband's going through something in real time, you know what I mean? It's like, just deal with that behind closed doors. Well, but what do I know? It says, continues, it says, um, Chris and Kim put out a statement without my uh, approval. That's not what a wife should do. Um, he says white supremacy at the end. Ish. He says the future, says the future of white, sees the future the future of white president. That would be funny, innit? If he did like a Dave Chappelle skit and came out covered in talcum powder and said, do you like me now? I mean, that would be super jokes. So that was that. And then I think Kim's actually responded, actually. That's been the update since I've actually spoken about it with a response. Basically, throwing some coal or throwing some... Um, dampening the flames of, oh, the family are throwing him under the bus. They don't care about him because it's still... I think Van Lathan said it actually the other day, innit? or just today, actually, Van Lathan said this. If I can find the Van Lathan one before we go there. Van Lathan said something about Kanye. Van Lathan... All right, Kanye, what do you say? He obviously, Van hasn't got that much time for Kanye, as you've seen, as he's proven with that video clip that went viral from him at TMZ, but he said something else. He said, the Kardashians don't care about Kanye. This is from, yeah, two quarter blog. I'll put it up on your screen if you can hear it. Right before we got on this podcast, there was an article in People Magazine that said that the family, again, is concerned. And I don't believe that they're concerned. I don't think they give up. I don't fuck. either. That's a whole, that's another like, topic right, too. I want right to talk away. About I am putting it out there right now. Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, Courtney Kardashian, Rob Kardashian, Kris Jenner. Name it, all the names. You don't give a fuck about Kanye West. I'm telling you Agreed. right now. I'm asserting it. I'm no. not in y'all house. Y'all don't give a fuck about Kanye West. No well, fucking and, way. And you let me can't tell make you me why believe too. that. No, I, I don't believe it. I'm just telling you what the article said. I agree with you actually 100% because there is no way that my husband would be out here making a fool of himself on such a public platform and I'm just sitting at home posting pictures on my Instagram and stories like everything is okay in the world. That's the bit that gets annoyed me a little bit. I think there is a bit of that kind of like, oh, if you only married a black woman thing going on, which I don't really get. Um, I don't know. It's just strange um, to suggest that somehow a black woman would have him under control. Kanye's acting out. And he's obviously acting out maybe because his brain's broken, maybe because he's actually going through stuff, like just in turn of growing up as a person, as an adult, coming, you know, coming to accept his position in society and 
wealth does a weird thing to you too i'd imagine especially when you mass when you amass the kind of what he's at is in a short period of time right when you become a self-made billionaire it must do something to your head um as well it must not be the most healthiest thing having corporate sponsorships kind of pull you and pushing you in different directions a really young family all of a sudden out of nowhere he had one kid had no kids and suddenly he's got four um that must be a real headache to deal with and he might be genuinely suffering from some kind of mental disease or illness that we have no idea about that's not for us to try and figure out but from what we know we know he's been clinically diagnosed with bipolar so that isn't a fun time i'd imagine right having to deal with that in a public eye but to just that uh, what black woman's gonna hold him down is come on that's insane like what what does that even mean he could just be an adult refusing to get help um it, i don't think it's indicative and again maybe that's why we put too much we put too much onus on that if somebody's tweeting you know, or saying something else online, that means they're not thinking about the issue. Maybe they are. Maybe to get out of thinking about it too much and because you're living it every single day because that person's your husband uh, and the father of your children, you just want to post a picture just to kind of let off some steam. I don't know. It's the new world, isn't it? People do that all the time. Do you think because, I don't know, people think as if like a family member of yours dies, God forbid, or something that you're not going to be on your smartphone liking pictures or going through Twitter, you're still going to be doing that. It doesn't mean you're not thinking about a person who just passed away it just is part of it i don't know it's a weird reaction to have but i guess that my assumption of that was kind of confirmed a little bit because of the response that kim put out there she read a statement regarding the whole issue which i thought was a fairly well balanced if not a bit you know it's a bit it was a in my opinion it's unnecessary right to do that but i think how they operate as a family and how they operate as a brand they just have to be mindful of how they're perceived in public they can't have people looking at them a certain way i understand and just in general they've lived their lives entirely on social media it would only be right to kind of you know correct or address what's actually going on with their family especially in this such a public way you know this is the main it's the big deal you know the the man of the house is acting out on social going through what we suppose might be a mental breakdown you have to say something you know i guess so this is a statement that um kim put out there i think via instagram stories that someone posted on twitter i'll read for you guys it says as many of you know Kanye has a bipolar disorder anyone who has this has a love or has a loved one in their life who does knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand i've never spoken publicly uh, about how this has affected us at home because i'm very protective of our children and Kanye's right to privacy when it comes to his health so mostly to do with Kanye, i guess isn't it she's not allowed to talk about this stuff in public which i which is fine but i don't really think she should anyway even if given the opportunity to i don't think it kind of serves any purpose it's not our why should we have the right to have that information you know we're not going to do anything for him it's like for remember when he was going through his first tweets and campaign stuff and people online were psychoanalyzing him and being flipping um uh armchair psychiatrists at home like just relax you know relax um it continues here it says uh prior to health i said but today i feel like i should comment on it because of the stigma and misconception about their mental health interesting way to take because she could have just said i feel like i can i can comment on it because of my name's got dropped in it and my mum's name you know i can't be having that but instead she wants people to have compassion it seems it says continue it says um those that understand mental illness or even compulsive behavior know that the family is powerless unless the member is a minor people who are unaware are far removed from this experience can be judgmental and not understand that the individual themselves have to engage in the process of getting help no matter how hard the family and friends try which is very true um i guess for, uh, for me looking at it from the outside it's always interesting to see that fair enough this is a big issue and a really serious one but prior to this when maybe kanye was endorsing trump it was interesting to see how silent my social media feed was especially to some of the kind of more influencer type people who are so quick to post a picture of a post-it note of that can't you rip with their size or with the yeezy kind of you know um box or something or saying thank you to the team for sending them a pair of shoes or a jacket those same people are quiet as a mouse on social concerning what Kanye goes through which is interesting because all the praise that they do online the ways that they show affection for each other's friends is always done on social but the moment it comes to supporting them emotionally when they're going through a tough time it's all it's supposedly done behind closed doors which i'd never believe right it's always just you know they would rather avoid that bad pr because they don't want to get that you know that kanye stink on them so i'd assume those same people aren't the ones near him now who he probably needs i'd imagine right um he's probably someone that in his state of mind being spent spending that much time alone with your own thoughts probably isn't a good thing 
but that's always just the funniest observation those same people that are always quick to post their invite to a Paris Fashion Week show don't see anything about the stuff that he goes through especially when it comes to the Trump and politics they're like next one she says um, I understand Kanye is subject to criticism because he is a public figure and his actions at times can cause strong opinions and emotions he is a brilliant but complicated person who on top of the pressures of being an artist and a black man who has experienced the painful loss of his mother and has to deal with the pressure and isolation that is heightened by his bipolar disorder those who are close with Kanye know his heart and understand his words sometimes um, sometimes do not align with his intentions the losing the mother thing is interesting because this happened a while ago but it's like that's why people say that's why grief is such an interesting thing to analyze right it affects people in so many different ways like you could lose somebody today and just not feel it maybe or not react in the kind of conventional way for a, a prolonged period of time and then suddenly i've heard so many stories about it where it suddenly just hits you out of nowhere and you just go through a complete grief spiral so maybe this is what he's going through as well plus on top of his own you know predisposed medical or hereditary conditions that he might be he might have had that that you know it's, it's just interesting to see as an observation that he's still being affected by his mother's death somehow because this, this is coming from his wife then if, um, I, I would have to believe that he's still affected by it quite greatly especially considering under the circumstances she passed away do you know what I mean um that would probably hurt you a lot more that it was kind of an avoidable situation um but yeah it continues it says um living with bipolar disorder does not diminish or invalidate his dreams his creations ideas no matter how big or unobtainable they may feel to some that is part of his genius and as we have all witnessed many of his big dreams have come true of course that's an excellent statement from her she's a real ride or die woman isn't it that's what you one thing about the collections they can be annoying to look at as you know to kind of so psych to analyze right as one of the kind of hindrances to society nowadays right they're probably everything that most people claim they hate but i think it they they serve us they serve a lot of good in society in that they are exactly what they say on the tin they accurately represent that vapid materialistic um lifestyle in la or in hollywood or any kind of glitzy place that you might live in or might aspire to go to but they also maintain this real core of family values everything is centered around the family um and, you know in some places in some cases like you know chloe, Char chloe kardashian and tristan it can seem a bit weird that they kind of go through this on off thing you know courtney has that stuff that happens rob has his but they always keep this core of like let's hold the, it's everything or oh, everything is done with the family's best interest or everything's done in order to keep the family tight and close and you know they can come to blow sometimes on tv and still be closer than most families are out there so that's great to see so i think that's a good thing and just in general being able to because i think le better women in maybe less worse conditions would have probably left by now you know especially i don't especially when you consider the current climate at the moment right with meat not meat is not a good example but you know with this kind of push to uh remind women of their agency right um to put women in positions of power of influence decision making no one would, she would be you know this press run that she would have if she kind of initiated a divorce would be insane right do you know what i mean own boss and she should she didn't take any money from him she let him have this let him have that and she kind of stood on her own two feet she would be on another level so for her to kind of buck the trend and sort of push against that and be like, nah, I'm going to be a down bitch or down wife. I'll take it back down, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to be a down ass wife and I'm going to hold my guy down until the very end, until I can't take it no more. It's amazing to see. It's definitely through sickness and health, isn't it? And the last one, it says, we as a society talk about giving grace to the issue of mental health um, as a whole. However, we should also give it to the individuals who are living with it in these times when they need it the most. So I definitely agree with that one. Since I kindly ask that the media and the public give us the compassion and empathy that is needed so that we can get through this. Thank you for those who are expressing concern, Kanye's well-being and for your understanding with love and gratitude, Kim Kardashian West. I wonder if Jamila Jamil reached out and gave them love as well. The absolute no fun son of a bee but um yeah that's a pretty nice sentiment and statement there i don't i think it's a bit much you can't ask for anything with people i think the moment what was a good moment of the the moment i saw tmz posting images of excess tentations lifeless body i knew you know that that press that arm of the press that paparazzi sort of media thing that kind of let's get the news out no matter what's going on 
and especially you remember that kid that wore that um make america great hat in front of that um uh native american person how do you call them is it um american indian um remember that person was beating a drum and it was it came out that oh they try to frame the story as if this kid was saying something insulting to the guy beating a drum and it transpires that that wasn't what happened but the news went to frame it that way ever since i saw that sort of stuff i knew okay the news the media they, they have no scruples right they have no they have no moral compass they just want to stoke division or cause controversy or just keep the news cycle running so it's admirable that kim would want the news media or social media in general to be a bit more kind and to be a bit more forgive it's what they're going through but the fact that people don't like them to begin to begin with the fact that people don't like him to begin with too especially post um trump endorsement it's just asking for too much it's not going to happen no one's ever going to give them time grace space to heal and move it's not going to happen people are going to make the jokes they're going to say what they want to say and they're going to just have to swallow it or not that's the bad side so that's what makes me think that you know you really couldn't pay me enough to be a celebrity at that level you know of course it's only reserved for the small amount of people it does the tiniest amount of the population ever get a chance to become that famous because you know they're obviously outliers the collections and him and Kanye himself he's an outlier even amongst celebrities isn't it? he's like the one the one of the one percent but god almighty look what you have to deal with you have to talk about your 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 husband having a mental breakdown in public you have to address all the nonsense concerning abortions and stuff imagine no, everyone knowing that information Especially if you're a woman, you know, something is things that you keep quite close to your chest or you only share with your with the person that you're, you know, that happened to get you pregnant. But for everyone to know that you've thought about abortions or you've had some in the past and for sure people are digging up information to find out if when she got the pill, it's just, it's mad, man. Mad, 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 mad. Hopefully they get through it, you know. It will be a good way to imagine if they get through it and then we get a cure. It'll be a good little, you know, celebration for people that care about them. But I don't know, man. It's just interesting to see from the outside, isn't it? That I think people just need to, for fans of Kanye, let's stop with the he's going crazy because maybe he is. But let's also think that this might also be his personality too. Right, there might be instances where he's going a bit nuts and saying some manic stuff. Um, he's going for an episode, of course, but I think this also might be just a glimpse into what his personality is, anyway. Sedated or not, he might just be this guy, um, who's a bit of a free thinker, as he says, right, and says and backs who he wants and thinks slavery was a choice and doesn't rate um, doesn't rate Harriet Tubman. <laughs> oh absolute madman absolute madman but yeah let's hope he gets better in it let's hope he gets better